Welcome back everybody. This video I'm going to turn this trenching shovel into a metal detecting shovel and uh, I'll show you the process and the build up and uh, the finished product when I'm done. Let's do this. All right guys, if any of you are into metal detecting and you know that there's recovery tools and metal detecting shovels out there and they're usually fairly expensive. Um, and I do use some expensive recovery tools, but one tool I wanted in my arsenal was a metal detecting shovel. Now, the shovels that are out there that you see at the websites and stuff, they're around a hundred bucks, if not more, for a decent quality metal detecting shovel. One problem with those shovels, and I've owned them in the past, is that they're straight. The, the blade goes straight down. They're not angled like this so you don't have any prying options when you're digging so when you do dig a plug with a metal detecting shovel and you go to pull the plug out of the ground you have to lower the handle way down to the ground and you're bending over this prevents that and so this is a razor back from home depot it's about 30 bucks um i'm gonna cut the handle down i'm gonna put a d handle on it i'm gonna serrate both edges sharpen it and uh, I'm gonna modify the foot pads and put some uh, bolts in there threaded bolts with lock nuts on it to give a uh, grip so you put your foot on it most of you guys if you're starting out metal detecting will want to have you want to use something like this just a cheap little D handle shovel do not use these for metal detecting, relic hunting. If you're out in a field, it may be okay, but they're flimsy. They don't hold up. I just use this one for light prospecting, but also to the optics of having a shovel with you while metal detecting looks bad. And, you know, you don't want to be carrying this out to a uh, playground or a park or sports field. And that's why I use the hand diggers. And, I'll do a video probably on just comparing different tools and talking about the different recovery tools for the new people out there. But I'm gonna save about maybe $60, $70 by building my own uh, metal detecting spade. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, so this handle is way too long, right, to carry around for metal detecting. And most metal detecting spades are about 35, 36 inches depending roughly right about there. So I want to cut the handle off at about 35, plus I'm going to add a D handle to this. If you wanted to, you could remove this rubberized grip from this handle and then just place it down over it after you cut it off. That's another option if you want it straight. I want a D handle on it. Um, but I'll, I'll put the video, you know, it'll be in the video when I mount it on there, but I'm gonna measure this out about where I want to cut the shaft off at this fiberglass handle, heavy duty, razorback, uh, five inch blade, trenching shovel from Home Depot, it's about 30 bucks. Five inches is about right there. Of course, I'm going to add a D handle to it. And that's about where I want it, right there. So when I dig down, maybe four or five yards, about 35 inches plus the D handle. I'm a taller guy. So, yeah, I'll cut it off about 35 inches.
fiberglass handle, so I I have jaws in here with rubber pads that are half moon, so it'll grip the shafts and whatnot. So I'm gonna take a sawzall, metal blade, you could take a hacksaw, chop saw, whatever you can do to get that straight. Um, I'm pretty decent, plus I have a grinder and whatnot, I can straighten it out, but yeah, go ahead and cut this. All right guys, so I got my mark here, got a secure device, I just put my piece of cardboard I use for painting on to keep my bench safe. Um, I'm gonna use my Sawzall. People wanna know where I get the name Rigid from, R-I-D-G-I-D, that's where, for the people who know me as Rigid. But I'm using just a metal blade, it's a finer tooth blade and it'll uh, keep from burring the handle and uh, have this locked in, but yeah, let's get her cut. shovel um like i said what you could do is get underneath here with the, like a, a small screwdriver or something and put some solvent down in there and release this handle off of here and then you could slide this handle on there if you wanted just to keep a, a straight handle you could uh put a plug in it and take some tennis racket or baseball bat tape and put a handle on it i mean you have multiple options i'm just going to de-handle it but uh yeah cut it pretty good anyway on to the next step all right guys so I got my cheap Harbor Freight angle grinder and I have it mounted in my vise I turned my vise and I have a sanding disc on here just a rough grit um, what I'm gonna do is take the handle and just sand down this edge on here um, I'll probably mute the sound when I turn this on and do this to the just gonna take that same grinder but with a, an actual grinding disc and I'm going to cut the serrations on both sides of the blade and then I'm going to sharpen the edges of it but so what I'm going to do I think what I want to do since we're about nine inches from point to here I'm thinking maybe every inch maybe something to mark it. All right, so I'm gonna start from the bottom up. So let's go a mark here. And I'm gonna look at what every inch looks like. And I may not go all the way up with the third. Now 
clean this up and I'll draw this out better, but I'm trying to gauge where I want. guys setting up grinder head changed over you want eyes ears protection it's got a moving blanket just to catch some of the sparks so i took an old towel wetted it it's a safety precaution a little water right here anyway let's do this
right, guys, serrations are all cut. It's pretty easy. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, I will clean up this a little bit. I'm sure on the other side, yeah, there's a lot of burrs on the underneath side. So that's what I have the sanding disc for. I might hit it with the grinder a little more to sharpen up the edges and then finish it off with the, with the sanding wheel. But yeah, that looks pretty good. I like it. reason for the serrations, you don't have to have serrations. If you just cut the handle down and put a handle on it, that's fine too. The reason why you see serrations on metal detecting shovels is because when you get into like the woods and fields and stuff with a lot of roots, it helps cut through the roots. But yeah, looks good. All right, continuing on. Cleaning up the, the burrs because when you grind it, it'll have a burr on the back side. All right, gang, so there's the serrations. I just took a sanding disc and the grinder and just, you know, made it to where there's no real sharp edges. This will wear down as you use it. And I didn't make this razor sharp either. I just cleaned it down to more of a, but it's, there's no boogers on it to like catch. And that's what you're really looking for. But yeah, that'll work. I mean, if you wanted to pretty it up and paint it, that's fine, but. I don't think there's a need to. Now I'm gonna drill, I'm gonna drill the holes in here to get the, the bolts that I was, I'm gonna put some short little bolts through here, short, just enough to get a lock, a locking nut on the back side, even if it's sticking up just a little bit. Have four matching bolts back here, and that'll give us a foot pad to be able to put our foot on some drip. Jeff, going on. Yeah, I never throw screws away. <laughs> But uh, this would work, they're stainless steel. They're just a little too long. I mean, I want to put, be able to put a locking nut so it locks on there. But the problem is that by the time I run this down, there'll be too much sticking up above it. I don't want it that thick. I could grind it down. Could put one on each side. Could put one on each side of here and run it through. That's still gonna be too long by the time I'm done. Gotta find screws or I gotta go to the store one of the two. But that's about right. Right there is what I'm looking for. By the time I put a washer behind it and all that, that would be right if I could find it. Even one of these on each side will give you something to grab with with your foot so your foot don't slide off of it. Two in there would be key. So it would be four all together, but we'll see what I got for screws. 
Very good. Got them mounted, but as you can see, they're too long. So I'm just going to take my saw and cut the piece off. Mount it twice, cut them off, and then we've got foot pads to help grip for our feet. Getting there. All right, guys. The only thing left to do now is attach the handle, and we're good to go. One metal detecting digging shovel. Go. Cool. Alright guys, so the last order of business since we cut our handle down. We could get underneath here, like I said, with a screwdriver and put some solvent underneath there to get this handle off and we'll put this handle off. I'm trying to like ripping it off. We could wrap this with a baseball bat tape, tennis racket tape, probably in that as well. Um, I want a D handle. So what I did is I ordered uh, like a polymer fiberglass D handle off of Amazon. I think it was like 16 bucks made in the USA. And it's the right diameter, inch and a quarter. That'll fit. Pound this down. Drill holes in it. And that's what this pin is for. You notice the pin is not threaded. I, I'll sand, I'll measure the depth of the handle, I'll, sa I'll scuff the paint on the handle here, I'll take like a file or something, scuff the inside of the handle, I'll put it in place, drill the hole through it, take it out, I'm going to glue it, put it back in, drop the pin through it, and then I'm going to peen, take a hammer, piece of steel or something hard, I'm going to use my vice, and then I'm going to it over and that'll hold it in place but yeah. but you know any handle you want to put on it's fine I just prefer a D handle anyway I'll start the video up the next step all right so measuring down right at two inches so I got two inches here I want to stuff Scoring the inside of it. Just to roughen it up. All of it. You can take a little piece of sandpaper and put it in. Spinning it will hold it. It's pretty tight on the hand. Putting the handle on, like I said, it's tight, but not too tight. So what I'm 
gonna do is I'm gonna put it on by hand and I'm just gonna feel it tap down. Now bottom's back. Now it's completely bottomed out. I can feel it back. Now that looks about right, but what I'm gonna do is take it out of the vise and I'm gonna put it down where I can see it. And see if it's straight to me or not. And if it's not, I'll tap it, turn it. So I like it where I want it to be. Take your time with it. Make sure it's right. If you're gonna do anything, always do something to make sure it's right. Still not quite satisfied. Rubber mount. step is to drill. The trick when you have to drill two sides, drill one side, turn it over, drill the other side. Don't try to drill it all the way through. Since it's hollow, once you get through here, the bit might be one way or another and you won't drill straight through it. So I'm just going to tap it again one more time to make sure it's completely seated. It is. Now I'm going to drill here. Drill through. Now I'm going to turn it around and drill the other hole. Like I said, don't try to drill through it because it's not a solid piece. You, you won't hit that hole correctly. If you hit it right, drill both sides. And there it is. Now, what I'm going to do the next step. From here, you could, you could put the pin through it, peen it over, and be done with it. I'm going to go an extra step, and I'm going to put some glue on there before I do that. You don't have to, I don't think, but I am. Now I'll go ahead with my drill bit, make sure the holes are cleaned out nice and good. They are. Go down to the second one now, find it, find it. Try to find it where it is.
Crash next door. Now, if you notice, this part's kind of hollow, and that's what's going to clean over. And I'm going to use this as like an anvil, and we'll start painting it over. 